Has TCU found their quarterback in the portal? We'll talk about that next in Lockdown Horn Frogs. You are Locked On Horn Frogs. Your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. That's right. It's your team every day. I'm your host, Stephen Simcox. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel. Also, wherever it is, you get your podcast, Locked On Horn Frogs. Happy to be with you. And for really the last few months, we've been discussing the quarterback situation at TCU. Feels like Chandler Morris is the obvious starter. And behind him is Josh Hoover and player out of Rockwall. He is going into a sophomore season, redshirt freshman season. He had a good spring camp. Thought he had a good spring game, looked confident throwing the football. He's in an offensive system now uh, that is similar to what he played um, in high school. And so he seems to be processing that at a high level. But you still need another quarterback. And it's nice to have three scholarship QBs on your roster. The tricky thing for TCU is that nine times out of ten, if a quarterback hits the portal – it's because they're not starting at their current location and they want an opportunity to start. They want at least an opportunity to compete with um, a player on the field. And we saw um, TCU went after Walker Howard, a young guy from LSU <clears throat> who ended up at Old Miss. Sawyer Robertson, young player out of Mississippi State. Um, they also pursued him in the first portal window. And he ends up at Baylor. And the reasoning for him – ending up at Baylor was because he felt like he had a better chance to beat out Blake Shapin, the current Baylor quarterback for the job, than he did Chandler Morris. So they went the younger guy route, younger players uh, who had multiple years of eligibility, trying to sell them on, okay, we have a guy, but we don't have an heir apparent, and so you can come in and compete, and when Chandler leaves, then you'll you'll be next up potentially if you win the job. And so it's almost like they've been looking for a backup QB you know, we see this in the NFL. You got your starter, but you don't have a good second team player. Andy Dalton has fit that role really nicely in, the, in a couple of stops lately. Um, but that's much more prominent in the NFL. There's always veteran quarterbacks who might take an opportunity to just hold the clipboard for a couple seasons, make some good money. Um, if they're called upon, then get out there and play, and they're not going to hinder you. But it's much rarer to find that fit in college football. However, Jeremy Clark from uh, Horn Fog Blitz 247 website reported that TCU did have a visitor on campus. Oregon State, former Oregon State quarterback Chance Nolan visited the Frogs. And he has some more information about how he kind of feels about that. If you want to go check that out, you can check out Horn Frog Blitz. I'll leave that um, to, to his info because some of that's behind a paywall. But Chance Nolan, Oregon State quarterback, visiting TCU. Who is this guy? Um, a really ex- a really experienced player, excuse me, is coming off an injury, had a neck strain um, on October 1st and a loss to Utah, ended up getting sidelined for the rest of the regular season after that. Oregon State had a good year last year. They were 9-3, and 6-3 and three in the Pac-12, beat Oregon for the first time in a long time. Um, but no one's a redshirt junior. He started 20 games in his career over three seasons in Corvallis. Threw for 4,153 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 20 interceptions. So you're getting someone with a lot of experience if the Frogs are able to land him. 2021 was a huge season. Um, Completed 64% of his passes for 2,677 yards, 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. um, And he can run the ball a little bit too. I mean, not eye-popping rushing stats, but 286 yards on the ground in 2021. 147 yards on the ground in 2020, um, showed the ability to get out of the pocket, showed the ability to make plays off schedule, throw on the run. So this seems like if TCU can land him, it would seem like a slam dunk. Now, that's a lot of production that he's bringing in. And so I'm not sure exactly what the conversations have been like between him and the staff because I I don't really think there's going to be a competition here. Now, maybe they're telling him that – Hey, we'll see. Nobody, you know, you never know. Get in camp and throw the ball around and show what you can do on this offense. But I, I feel really confident in the fact that Chandler Morris is a starter. But what you're getting in Nolan is a guy that's seen a lot of football, um, could be a good sounding board 
for Chandler on the sidelines as far as what is he seeing from the defense, uh, you know, what blitz packages are they bringing, what coverages are they dropping into, how can he help from that standpoint. And then if something were to happen, <clears throat> an injury or whatever, you have a backup who can step in and lead this offense with confidence and it's played at a high level in, you know, power five football and big time college football over an extended period of time. So that's really significant. I didn't think they would get someone with this type of production um, and be able to, to get them into camp and sell them on, hey, you're probably not going to be the starter, but you can come help us. Nolan has two years of eligibility. He's going to be a grad transfer. He's finishing up some <clears throat> academic stuff at Oregon State. But overall, this would be a big time. I think this would be a big time um, win if they could land him. It gives you depth in that quarterback position. It gives you, again, somebody who understands, you know, the speed of the game, how to play if they're called upon, but also just a, another good mind in that quarterback room um, who can help out with game planning, can help out with some in-game adjustments because he's seen so much through the years in Pac-12 football. So, We'll see what happens. Um, I know Auburn has showed some interest as well. Don't know if he's planning on visiting Auburn, but feel pretty good about Chance Nolan if they can land him. That would give them three QBs. They went out and got uh, Dalen Wright, the wide receiver out of Minnesota. We'll talk about him more in a minute. I got some information from um, the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast host about his potential. Colin Deary, the Maryland interior offensive lineman, they're pursuing him. Not much word on the D-line front yet, but I, I know that's going to be a priority for the staff in trying to land the quarterback with Chance Nolan from Oregon State. So we'll keep an eye on what the timeline is there, what the commitment might look like and what it might be. But, uh, yeah, I would really like that pickup if they can get Nolan. I'm just really pleasantly surprised that someone with that level of production and skill would be interested in, in coming to TCU for what's most likely a job as a backup QB. When we come back. Um, got some good intel from Kane Robb, the host of Locked On uh, Minnesota, about Dalen Wright. Let's talk about that in a minute. I do want to mention, though, I talk about them every day. FanDuel, they're a great sponsor. Um, so much great sports going on right now. I was locked in last night. Desmond Bain had a huge game for the Grizzlies against the Lakers. Unfortunately, Grizz go down 3-1. Um, even, you know, despite what Bain did. But I, I know he's a polarizing guy. I love LeBron. So it was fun to watch LeBron go off like last night, 20 points, 20 rebounds. If you're sitting there, you're like, man, I, I want to make some money on these NBA games. You should go to FanDuel. They're the official betting partner of the NBA. They have an app that's really simple to use. You can download that. Or you can go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet directly that way. They have some special deals like their no sweat first bet deal going on. All the time for Locked On listeners, if you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On, it's where the game starts. Uh, Major League Baseball also in full swing right now. NHL playoffs, plenty of games to get involved with. You can bet money lines, you can just bet against the spread, or you can do some of that more complicated stuff, parlays, prop bets. It's all available on FanDuel. Again, official betting partner of the NBA playoffs going on right now. All right, so uh, – Maybe I should save that for segment three. I'll, I'll quickly mention it now uh, before we get to the Dalen Wright stuff. TCU men's tennis. I should have mentioned this on Monday um, when I was in the midst of my baseball rant. But TCU men's tennis, they won an indoor national championship, um, have you know run through the regular season and been really successful, lost to Texas and Austin in the regular season finale. So the Horns end up with the Big 12 regular season title. But in the Big 12 tournament, uh, Frogs take on the Horns again, and they beat Texas. So now that the two teams have played four times this year, they've split those matchups. Uh, they're two and two. Frogs now getting ready for the NCAA tournament, and it really appears that Texas and TCU were the two best teams in the country. Would not be surprised if those two matched up in the Final Four for a national championship. Of course, there's a lot of matches in between that time but super excited congratulations to tcu men's tennis wins a big 12 tournament title ncaa tournament um on tap david roditi there's really not a more consistent program on campus right now i know jacob langford um faithful listener of the show is always like you need to talk about tennis 
Um, and I, I make a note to, but then it sometimes gets lost in the shuffle. But we'll be following them closely as they get ready for an NCAA tournament run. Um, so Dalen Wright, Minnesota wide receiver, coming over to TCU. I reached out to Kane Robb, who is – let me make sure I get the show name right. Um, he's the host of Locked on Golden Gophers. Okay, I love that. I love that mascot. I love that that's the name of the show. I was hoping to get him on the show today, but it just didn't work out scheduling-wise. But I asked him, I was like, hey, what are we getting from Dalen Wright? First of all, he told me it's Dalen, not Dylan, which I, I butchered that yesterday, so my apologies. Um, it's spelled like Dylan, which you, you would think. But he sent me some quick thoughts. He said, honestly, I can tell you that staff and teammates have both said the talent on Dalen is unreal. His size, strength, and speed are great. He is just built to be a dominating wide receiver. One of his newer teammates in January at Minnesota prior to him transferring said, this guy might be one of the most gifted wide receivers I've ever played with. The one thing that stood in Dalen's way is Dalen. Not necessarily trouble off the field, but more so attitude, disagreements with the usage, or giving up on a play. When he's on, he's an absolute alpha wide receiver. He has caught the eyes of NFL scouts who have come through. Great hands, can win the contested catch, great at the high point, speed to get separation, fairly good in route running. Um, he puts in the work to have his body right. And so this is huge, man. He's got big-time potential. It hasn't really all come together. He was a big-time recruit when he went to AM, showed some flashes at Minnesota. Hopefully this, this staff can unlock uh, what you know he can be and a fresh start will be good for him. Some of you commented on the YouTube video yesterday. Zoom plays that he's a good wide receiver. I saw his highlights versus Ohio State. Yeah, he had a, a big game against the Buckeyes last season, which is exciting because obviously that's great competition. Um, and, again, he's shown some flashes of dominance, just hasn't really put it together on a consistent basis. Uh, Craig said wide receivers are an important to this offense. Yes, they are. Um, Mr. Dig said football transfers – Lost for more, lost for far more quality than gained. Excuse me. Um, yeah, well, I'll disagree with you there to a point. I think they lost a lot of numbers, and some of the guys they lost, they're gonna they're gonna feel that. Jordan Hudson, I think they're gonna feel that loss. Um, you know, some some guys like Altrick Barlow who are depth on the offensive line, I think they're gonna lose. But they're not done adding people, so I'd say let's wait until. We see what this full class looks like in the second window before we start saying that. Um, but, yeah, you lost you lost some talent. Um, I think TCU's going to be aggressive in trying to add some guys who can make up for that lost production. And then, uh, you know, we'll see kind of how it all shakes out when, when it gets closer to the end of this window. Mark said TCU should crush Colorado. I hope so, man. There's a lot of hype right now about Dion and Coach Prime and that team. I think it'll be an interesting game. Colorado has so many new faces. They had a lot more people transfer out this weekend after their spring game, and so they're going to have even more turnover. I really feel good about, you know, TCU taking care of business in week one. But there is some – like there's some momentum, at least from Colorado fans. That might be a competitive game. Might have to get the Locked On Colorado host on soon to kind of break that down. Um, and then CJ said, maybe not this year, but I like Fluellen out of Gilmer too. Yeah, so Rohan Fluellen – uh, he was recruited as an athlete. He was a wide receiver and defensive back at a Gilmer. Gilmer, one of the best um, programs in the state of Texas. They played Carthage for a state title, I think, last year or two years ago, and he had a couple touchdown catches. Um, I'm not sure what side of the ball he'll be on. I think they are recruiting him as a wide receiver. CJ, you're right. But he's a, he's a guy that won't get here until the fall. Um, I'm excited about him, too. He's a heck of an athlete. One of those smaller school guys that kind of did everything he was asked to do at the high school level. And so if he can step into a position where he can work on it and kind of hone in on his craft, I feel like there's a high ceiling there. So, yeah, a lot of good athletes at that wide receiver position. TCU has a chance um, to get it done in a big way with those wide outs if they can uh, find a way to get this offense some explosiveness. When we come back, we'll wrap it up. I'll, I'll – uh, share some comments that Steve Avila had about Max Duggan from a, a piece on uh, in The Athletic by Bruce Feldman. Before we do that, though, I do want to talk about Built Bar. Built Bar is the best protein bar around, um, and they have a new flavor right now, peanut butter. Built Bar has come out. I'm excited about it. Peanut butter Built Bars. You can find them at Sam's Club, at your local Walmart, also online at BuiltBar.com. Uh, it's good for you. Only 180 calories. 
Um, you don't have to feel guilty about eating it. It tastes good. I told you before, I'll frequently grab one for breakfast because it fills me up. It's something I can have quick on the go. BuiltBar.com. Give it a try today um, and experience the goodness of that protein bar. So final thing for you, I was just looking around Twitter the other day and I stumbled upon this quote from Steve Avila. And it's from a piece that Bruce Feldman did where he was talking to different quarterback coaches and scouts about this quarterback class. He was really honing in on the top three or four quarterbacks. So Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. He was asking a question about Will Levis, and one of the QB coaches anonymously said, I talked to guard Steve Avila from TCU, and he would not shut up about Max Duggan. Like, he said, I would die for him. I was like, I get it. And he said, no, you don't. You don't understand. We love him. I think people say that about Bryce. I don't see that about Levis. And so, I mean, that's not shocking given the year that Max had. It's cool and encouraging, though, like what a leader he is and how much respect those guys had for him. Um, and I think it's the reason that he'll be successful in the NFL. I'm not sure it'll be as a starter even, you know, after a couple of years, but I feel like his, his work ethic and his ability to be a great teammate and be someone who's prepared and ready to go and be a professional will allow him to have a chance to make a roster and maybe thrive in a backup role uh, wherever he lands. I hope the Cowboys get him. I'm a Cowboys fan, but I don't really see that happening, even though Jerry Jones – Said some nice things about him. We'll see. I'm drafting him up Thursday. Quentin Johnson, hopefully be a day one pick. You know, we'll see about Steve Avila. Um, maybe day two. Uh, Trey Tomlinson, Kendra Miller. A lot of different guys should come off the board for the Frogs over this weekend. And we'll cover it all here on Locked on Horn Frogs. It's your team every day.